Uh, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for having me over here. And I think uh, uh, I love the inclusivity of this conference. In an APM conference, they wanted an exploratory tester to speak. How can a conference get more inclusive than this, that they want a tester in an automation conference, right? So, um, you know, I really love that aspect of it. And I really love to speak to people who have been, um, you know, testing, who have, been, who have been doing automation. So just a show of hands, how many of you do exploratory testing? Okay. And how many of you don't do exploratory testing? Well, there are a few people who don't do exploratory testing. Okay. How many of you write, write automation code? Okay. How many of you automate tests? Okay. Uh, great. So for me, having been an exploratory tester, here is how I understand the testing you know, spectrum. So no matter what, what your understanding of you know, testing is, okay, testing has these components, which is, which, is, which is understanding the context, which is you know, discovering things beyond understanding the context, uh, you know, setting up, uh, you know, be it a lab, be, be it the environment, and then about uh, you know, coming up with experiments, and then running those experiments, and then about using, using the reports to influence people. Do you broadly agree this is, this is what the spectrum of testing is? Yes, no. Do you broadly agree? Do you have any disagreement? This is a good time to stop and say, I disagree with this. Do you have any disagreements on this? Yes, no. Do you have any disagreements? Okay, I'll let me simplify this question. Do you have disagreements? Yes, no. No, okay. Okay, awesome. So we are in sync. And so we, in this kind of a spectrum, from the outside, you know, people think that this seems to be a smooth flow, that, uh, you know, we understand the context, then it moves to this, then it moves to this. So it's, it looks like it's a phased approach that you know, somebody would understand at the start of the sprint something, and then they would translate it to a setup, and then they would translate it to a set of tests, and then they would start to run those tests. So in my, in my experience of having been an exploratory tester, here's one thing that I discovered that it's not just like a sequence, it's not a phase, it is, it is a continuous activity. So when you are you know, running tests, you could be thinking about what to influence. When you're running tests, you could be thinking about setup. When you're running tests, you could be thinking about, oh, I missed uh, you know, understanding you know, this context. And so, you know, so this is what happens uh, in my mind as an exploratory tester. And now I ask this question, what do we automate? Every time I've heard this term, automation, in the space of testing, most people okay, tend to think that they're automating the tests, the run, the run part of the tests, because, because that forms a large part. Okay, why do they do that? It's because it has, there is a repeatability of, of things that we need to do, and then there is a human fatigue if if you know humans were supposed to you know, keep actually doing that, and then there are checks. So checks can be automated, and all of this is to address a pain that if, if those tests were, were not done by humans and were done by you know, machines, we would move faster. So there are multiple reasons why people think about automating this. And uh, can I ask this question? And I asked this question multiple times in uh, you know, Twitter recently, even you know, for me as a prep to this conference talk, who does automation uh, help and whose pain does automation solve? Okay, so I want to I wanna hear your answers. I've got some answers on you know, Twitter that you know, the community has actually spoken. So whose pain does automation solve? Any answers? The testers? Okay. The? Okay, the release, you know, cycles. Okay, the developers. Right? The product owners and business analysts. Okay. So, so it seems to address the whole spectrum of everybody in the company. Right? Okay, that's, that's what, you know, test automation is supposed to solve. 
Yes or no? Okay, okay. Uh, how does automation help a tester? I've been an exploratory tester, and uh, when, when our team decided that we're gonna do automation and then you know, assume the automation was done and it started running, how different was my life? How different do you think my life was? My life got more busier. I was told automation is gonna make me free, right? You know why? Everybody in my team wanted to go and do automation. So all the, ba all the backlog that was there fell on my head. So automation never made me free. Automation made me more and more busy as an exploratory tester. So, so, so for me, when I was, uh, when I started my career in you know, 2003, and when I was discovering what testing is and what automation and the you know, testing is, I was told that automation will come and help you. You know, like how you know, some of you said automation will help a tester. How has automation really helped a tester? Right? I, I, I've been asking these uh, you know, questions. And, and for me, it has only made me more and more you know, busy because as even Anand Bagmar pointed out, you can't automate everything. Some has to be done by humans. And, and, and those people who are, who are interested to do that is not, is not you know, there. And the testers need help. So people like me need help. Who is helping me? So assume you're, you're writing something on APM. You're automating some of the checks. How does it help me as a tester? Can somebody answer that? I'm an exploratory tester. How does it help me? Right? What? Okay, some tools will help you. Okay. Uh, what kind of tools are you talking about? Okay. Right. Okay, yeah. How many of those tools are built by the testing community for the testers? Good. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Okay, and, and, and uh, as a follow up to that, who should care about the tester's pain? Who should care about the tester's pain? Well, the tester should care about the tester's pain. How many testers you know really want to do testing? In your companies, I see a few people smiling, huh? oh nice. In your companies, this is the reality, right? I mean, right? In your company, everybody who is as a tester wants to get out of testing as quickly as possible. This is the culture we have built, that we have made automation as a sexy thing and, and testing as the non-sexy thing. And all of those people who, who advocate automation, including you know, people like Anand Bagmar who said, automation is not everything. Good Anand. Who else does that? Who else, who does the other aspect of it? What are we doing as a community? What are we doing as a community to support those testers? Who are building this, who, who, who are working towards uh, removing the testers' pain, right? So this is, this is the question that I embarked on and I started to focus to build tools because one thing I realized for sure, Nobody is going to come and help me, right? As a tester, especially. I mean, I mean, if if uh, now I know in in some of your minds is like, what is this guy really saying, right? <laughs> in I I'm I'm very clear. I've I've gone and asked for help. I need help on you know testability, right? Most often, I don't know about the culture of of the companies where you come from. Most often, the developers are so busy that they can't add a testability layer for me. I got to build that for myself. 
if I really want to do a good job, all right? So, so what I did is I started to focus to remove the tester pain, my pain as a part of journey. And I'm going to share with you a few stories of the kind of pain that I experienced and what I did, you know, to remove that. So, you know, so the first thing is I joined, you know, McAfee in 2004 and in, uh, I was a part of this team called the Group Shield, you know, Domino. Uh, and, and, and we had this, you know, Lotus Notes uh, and, and, and there was a virus, you know, scanner attached actually to it. And we had to run through a lot of these, you know, tests. And there is a huge virus collection that we have to run. And then, uh, you know, this has to be benchmarked against, uh, you know, the, you know, the command line scanner the, uh, and, the, and the GUI scanner. And then it has to be benchmarked and then a report has to be generated. So, it, in terms of complexity of this, uh, you know, people had actually come out with a five-page script, five-page, you know, script to follow to generate a report and validate, you know, the report. And here is those, you know, five pages. <laughs> oh, here's the five pages. I've, I've certainly obfuscated it. Um, and, 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 uh, and we took eight hours to generate every report. So, so for, you know, for me, I want to find more bugs. As an exploratory tester, I want to do two things. I want to improve my coverage, and I want to find more bugs. And I want to, and I want to spend time influencing uh, you know, people to make better you know, decisions. I want to provide a mirror. I want to influence people to think and rethink about the product and engineering you know, decisions that they've been making. But, but for me, I spent eight hours uh, you know, trying to generate a report, and, and here's what happened is that I didn't know programming on this particular, you know, date. I learned Perl because I said, you know, I went around, you know, looking for help. You know, people were busy. I'm not saying that they ignored me. I'm saying that the people were, you know, busy. And so I, you know, took this up as my personal, um, you know, thing to solve. Okay, because I wanted to really find more bugs. I'm, I'm really passionate about, you know, testing. I've, I've never wanted to big. I've never wanted to go into the sexy side of you know, testing, which is, let's say, automation. I know what my game is. I want to play this game really well. Okay, so I learned, uh, um, you know, I learned, you know, Perl, and, and, and I tried, you know, my own implementation of this, and uh, we had this, uh, you know, tool, uh, uh, and, and, you know, this, you know, saved, you know, my time. I ended up solving, you know, my problem, and then it was rolled out to the other, uh, what's say, testers. So this is how I um, built my first, you know, tool. Okay, the second one in 2009, I was consulting for actually Tesco, and they had this uh, uh, hung, uh, you know, they have store in Hungary, and and they, and we were actually testing in India a scheduler application which will actually schedule. Uh, when an employee will be there at what you know store and what time based on their contract and all of this stuff. And one thing I'd like to say is this: when in you know a, a bunch of Indians testing labor law compliance for Hungary, right? And in and here's the context: if if the scheduler schedules in such a way that we flout one of the employees' contract that employee can sue Tesco and claim several million dollars. Do you think we as Indians are sensitive to this? We slog. We don't, we, we don't know labor laws. Okay, do you know labor laws? Or do you know Indian labor laws? We don't know, even know Indian labor laws and, and here are a bunch of testers testing and validating Hungary's business laws. Hungary's business, you know, labor laws. So for me, when I went in as a consultant, I was actually a contractor, I should say. I, I was calling myself a consultant, but they said, you know, somebody is going for a six, six weeks leave. You know, can you come and actually fill in? So I said, okay. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to use my brain. You know, but then this was, you know, something like this. Okay, this is, you know, this is, you know, what they gave me. And then they gave me a rule sheet or the labor law sheet. And, they, and there were testers trying to look at, oh, this labor law, this employee, this uh, contract, you know, this thing. So they had a, at least, you know, what's it, three monitors in front of them. 
And so they were like, uh huh? You know, this is how it was. It was like watching a tennis match, R right? Obviously, this is, this, you know, for me, okay, look, you know, by this time, I was code handicapped. You understand what that is? I knew a little bit of Perl, okay, but that couldn't mean that I could create actually magic. I was code handicapped. And here is what I did in a, uh, you know, what's a test code to solve this problem. I said, we probably don't need to do these things. We probably can build a tool around this. And they said, do you know how to build it? I said, I know what tool to build, but I don't exactly know, you know, to write the code. It involved some store procedure, some Java, some Perl, and all of these combination, and then a little bit of Excel, you know, macros. So uh, I found, I found a developer had joined, and the good news about some of the Indian companies is you don't get a laptop for the first one month because there's a lot of process that, is that, you know, that needs to happen. I gave this developer my laptop and said, I will watch you code. Here is the problem statement, okay, can you help me, right? And I built a good partnership and this developer helped me, okay, to build this and, you know, this problem was solved. And we shipped this tool. We shipped this tool back to Hungary business team and said, don't, don't, don't disturb the testing team for watching a tennis match, right? I'm not saying this from an ego perspective. I'm just saying that that's the business value that we as testers need to provide. You know, when we talk about automation, when we talk about, you know, testing, how does the business understand its value? If business had really understood its value, the way businesses would be thinking about QA today would be very different. Okay, first of all, they took the word, you know, tester, and any human doing testing, they started calling QA. Okay, why? Because they wanted to call the, the, the non-developer coders as SDETs, right? So, so for me, uh, you know, call me QA, call me SDET, you know, whatever. This is the partnership, okay, that we built in order to build this tool out. Then, uh, uh, in a, you know, 2012, we were testing a bunch of e-commerce apps, and as a, what's it, Anand Bagmar was also, uh, you know, mentioning uh, about, hey, I need live feedback from what the users are saying. Now, now, in many, many organization cultures, they don't give access for the tester to, uh, you know, to analytics. They don't give access to the product code also. They don't give access to the analytics as well. But I don't want to be, I don't want to be limited by what the organization culture is. So I still want to provide value. Okay, so, so what we did is, is uh, you know, me and another, you know, developer, we partnered actually together okay, to build something called, you know, the Twitter-driven exploratory testing tool, where, where the moment a release happens, we start to run, we start to run this tool which will keep capturing tweets made to a certain handle and keep analyzing what are people actually tweeting. So we get a live uh, 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 instant, uh, you know, feedback where we are able to see are people tweeting the negative things, are people talking about crash, are people talking about, uh, you know, things, w what are the search terms that they're using, how can we improvise the data that we can, you know, that we can use, right? Okay, so that's, you know, that's one of those things. Then, uh, okay, you know, condition testing. So as an exploratory tester, if I want to find bugs, and, you know, Anand actually touched upon this beautiful point. If you're all, you know, testing, you know, mobile apps, in the wild, you know, things break. In your lab, everything works. You know, so where do you want to test? You want to test in the wild. How can you simulate the, the wild conditions? So um, I know, I know companies in the US, when they wanted to enter in, in India, they had to test something on, uh, you know, something as crazy as the 2G network. They would have probably not, you know, you know, tested some of the recent apps, okay, built over there. The 2G network here is a quasi state. There is neither a network, nor you can call it whether, it, you know, there is, there is an internet connection, but there's no internet connection. Okay, that's the 2G network. How do you, you know, how do you simulate all of those things? Okay, so what we did is we built, a, we built a tool which will help simulate, you know, different, you know, conditions that the, that the mobile app actually goes through. So what we do is, is we simulate 
a low ramp condition. Run the same functional test which passed in now on a low ramp condition. What would happen, you know, now, All right? And then run it in a in a different orientation. So you write a functional test. It could be automation. It could be it, it could be human driven. Now, if you had the capability to run the same test in a low ramp, and when the orientation is actually changing, your functional test will fail. But you want to know why it failed. So, you know, so that's where you know we built a TDK. Let's, uh, you know, it's an SDK. Okay, to do this. Now, you know, bug reporting is a distraction. Uh, every bug that I find, okay, becomes a distraction, especially when I'm testing, you know, mobile apps, right? Because what do you all do when you when you find a bug? You take a screenshot, right? And if it's a crash, you try to connect to your Android Studio or you know something and try to download the logs, and then you you have to you know combine all of this and actually put it into Jira, right? Look at how much time you're going to spend for every bug that you find. Every bug you find becomes a speed breaker for you to find more bugs, right? For me as a tester, I am obsessed to finding more and more high value bugs. So for, you know, so for this, okay, what we built is, okay, we built an app which will capture the flow of whatever the tester is actually doing, whatever the input, you know, the tester is actually providing, and then, okay, capture the flow, capture the screenshots, okay, and, you know, capture the logs, including the performance, you know, profiling aspect of it. So this way, the majority time of a tester goes in finding bugs and not in spending time too much to report all of these things, right? Now, uh, one of the other question for a lot of you know, developers that we have interacted with, in, at least in India, but that doesn't mean, you know, that's the reason why I wrote the indie developers, what should I test my app for? So a lot of developers out there cannot afford, uh, uh, you know, getting their app actually tested by somebody. So, so, you know, so for them, we built a full-fledged, uh, you know, checklist, right? And, you know, what we did is we use the, we use the iOS, you know, guidelines, we use the Android, uh, uh, you know, guidelines, okay, converted that into a checklist, can we build this over? Now, uh, I, I have the, uh, I don't know this, uh, you know, phenomenon. You know, some of you can relate to, and uh, for for those who are who have actually come from outside of India, you you may not relate this to. Have you heard of this uh, beautiful thing called "come and reproduce in front of me"? <laughs> you have not heard of that? Okay, here's what happens in India. So the moment the moment a tester, uh, you know, files a bug, and the developer gets a notification that there is a bug assigned to that, you know, developer. They pick up the phone, and they call the tester and say, come and reproduce in front of me. I, first time I heard it, I was, I was like, wow, really? Okay, now, now, now why does that happen? Okay, that happens because uh, we write pathetic bug reports, horrible bug reports. I've seen bug reports where it said, I did this, I did this, I did this, and then I got an error massage, right? <laughs> like, wait a minute, how can how can somebody associate credibility to this tester, but, but this tester is trying to add some value, right? So for me, I've been frustrated to hear this, and I really want to fix this problem. Because, because for me, this pains a lot. Every tester whose credibility is going down, it's, it's also my credibility that's going down, because I am a part of that you know, community. Why should I let other testers' credibility go down? What am I doing about it? Am I affected by this pain? I am affected by this pain. So right now, there's a work in progress where we are, uh, you know, building a Jira plugin where as and when you type, it'll try to catch as many obvious, okay, mistakes that a tester is actually doing and warn the tester. It's like compiling your code. It's like compiling your code. It, the moment the code is compiled, it says these many warnings, these many errors. That's what should happen for a tester when they're reporting a bug. You say there is an attachment, there is no attachment. And these things are pretty obvious. It's there in Gmail. We just have to bring these available things into, into what we need to do. So here's what I did. I went to the you know, Jira plugin you know, database, so, you know, to Atlassian. I searched for all the plugins that's there. Most of the plugins that are there are all test management plugins. 
There is no tester savvy plugins. Okay, think about it. You, you know, a lot of testers breathe in, breathe out, you know, Jira, all right? So, so uh, you know, the pain is plenty. I, I have, my life is full of pain. <laughs> there is no pleasure that I've seen yet. Okay, because for me, all these problems bother, bother, uh, you know, quite a lot. And I think that uh, for those who want to add value, they will see pain. And here's one thing that I've understood working with a lot of people. People who get, who get adjusted to pain don't solve the problems. People who can't get adjusted to the pain are the ones who will take some, some decisions to solve the problem. So, so here, if you are sitting in the APM conference, somebody, somebody thought that they can't live with this problem and they had to solve this problem. And look at how beautiful community this has created, right? Like that, there is multiple opportunities for us to create multiple, you know, testing communities by solving, you know, you know all of these, you know, problems. And here is an example. Here is a very simple example. A lot of testers don't know how much time they've spent, where they've spent, why they've not been able to add value, and all of these things. So, so we're building some, uh, you know, self-reflective, you know, dashboards which will try to plug into the you know, calendar and try to analyze where have you spent your time, is this where you want to spend your time, and things like that. Now, uh, uh, and you know, this is the way I see it. The whole world wants to solve one problem. Why? Because there's a lot of jobs in that space. Right? And, and so, there is 98% of the world who wants to automate the tests. Everybody wants to automate the tests. But there are so many other pain, uh, you know, so many other, you know, pain areas, and that's getting very, very little focus. So my prayer, my prayer, we all understand what a prayer means, irrespective of whatever, you know, religion you are, even if you're an atheist, you must understand this, right? So, so, so here's my prayer, you know, to this, you know, community. Build complementary things. In your company, in your company, don't everybody jump up and build the same thing. There are plenty of people out there that you can hire to, to today run tests, automate tests. So you have an opportunity to build complementary things, to look at the whole problem space and say, these, these pain points are never been, un, uh, you know, never been addressed by anybody. There are things beyond you know, tests you know, to automate, so for me, I call myself exploratory tester. I've also built some tools. I've also written some tools. So for me, I still call myself exploratory tester. And for me, this is automation too. It's not just that we have to automate the tests become automation. All of this is automation. For me, that, uh, you know, that app, which actually captures all of the screenshot flow and makes my reporting easy, that is beautiful automation. That also deserves a huge, uh, uh, you know, community. I'm not saying, uh, you know, because I built it. And in terms of, in terms of, uh, if you look at the problem statements, I can give you 100 problem statements today, having been a tester because, because of the pain. I'm sure, go talk to the testers in your company as well. That's what, you know, they'll give. They have a huge laundry list of it. And one thing that I've understood is that testers have pain, but they don't know to communicate it. Okay, testers need help, but they don't know to ask for it. Okay, this is also one of the reasons why they've not got the help that they, you know, really need. There are not enough, uh, you know, builders. Uh, you know, people need to become sensitive to a pain to solve the problem. You all are committed to APM, okay, because you are excited about solving this problem. And, and here's what I'm saying, that there are, there are also other problems for you to think about. So if you have some free time, if you do write code, and once in a while you want to change from writing APM code, you could think about writing these little tools and just like the way he mentioned, please make that public, okay? Please let, let, you know, let others also use it. If you know to build, if you know to build, you know, you, you know let us partner. I, you know, from this talk and from the series of the talks that I'm doing, I'm, it is important for us to form a community of where, you know, people come up with the ideas, like how there is an app store there should be a test store. If this is your problem, okay, let's do this. If this is your problem, you know, let's do this. And, 
you know, here are the tools. We have been rewriting a whole lot of, you know, stuff in the space of, you know, testing. Now, if you don't know to build, you know, does, does anybody here not write code? Wow. Okay, everybody writes code except me. That's good. Uh, if you don't know, if you don't know to build on your own, find, find a partner. If you, if you know to, if you know to build, okay, then, and if you, if you're interested about, um, you know, addressing a pain point, okay, go ahead and address the pain point and build the test, you know, store. Now, okay, pick an, great, okay, pick an unaddressed, uh, you know, pain point and let us begin to solve that, okay? You know, let us begin to solve that. Okay, so can you talk about, you know, some of the pain points that you see your testers are going through where there are no tools over there? Anybody? Any, any pain points that you can think about? Do, you know, do testers in your companies, you know, struggle without the necessary tools? Yes, no? Okay, what, what are the pain points? What are the pain points? I couldn't hear that. Impact analysis tool, excellent, excellent. Impact analysis tool. This is very important for us to influence people. You know, you know here is something that we have experimented. Uh, we, do, we do this impact analysis and we have, we have automated uh, triggering emails based on the risks, right? This is also for, um, what's the estimation, right? Is estimation working for you? Is estimation working for you? Yes or no? No, okay, it doesn't work anywhere in the world. I hope so, right? Uh, now, here is something that we have done about, about estimation. People ask for an estimate, right? Because they want to hear the number that they have in the mind. So it's like, it's, like, it's like actually playing a game, okay? How long would you take to test this? Whatever number you say, they're going to say, no, that's not the number. There's, there's another number in my mind. I want you to, okay, give, I'll give you three more chances, all right? Now, that's not how it works. We would estimate, we would estimate based on mitigating certain kind of risks. For, you know, for us to mitigate those kind of risks, we would have to do a risk profiling. You know, so what we do is, is again, there is a tool that we have built for that. Uh, we would look at all of those, you know, story points or epics or the features, look at the complexity, look at, look at the revenue impact of those, right? Look at the depth of the testing that's required, and then say, for this level of depth of testing, for this complexity, for this revenue impact, we would need this much time per browser, you know, per, uh, you know, mobile phone. Now, now, if they want to override this, they make a change to this in the tool, and then they would see that the risk level is going high. And if the risk level goes super high, there is an email that's actually triggered saying that this is a risk. Now, the reason why we build this tool is because testers are supposed to be courageous, but they are not, right? So we need a system to talk to people who understand systems and not understand testers. Right? Okay, so that's on the impact analysis. Any other problem statement? Any other problem statement that you want to talk about? Yeah, you had something. Okay. Yes. Right. Uh, visible in the sense yeah. uh, when you have a scenario right. and that scenario gets automated according to a particular uh, test validation like uh, when you have a test uh, validation matrix, right? right? Traceability matrix. So if you have a test traceability matrix and that tells you what all to test regarding that impact of that particular feature, yeah. which is going to give you a regression. Right. So if you have a tool which can actually have an AI a kind of an AI, it oh. gives you a sense of uh, what to test 
for a particular feature and do not go for the basic functionality, which actually, uh, if you have a code mind map, okay. which tells you the flow itself does not go there where you're testing. Yeah. So that makes sense of automating the stuff for the manual tester so that he already knows what flows to be tested manually and not repeat the task again. Yeah, like I feel. okay, great. Uh, so here is a tool that I can think of, uh, you know, which I've seen a tester, uh, you know, write. Um, you know, this guy wrote a tool which will, where, where you upload an APK, and it'll give you a mind map of the whole, you know, menu and the sub menu and the sub folders and you know things like this. This becomes very, very helpful, right? There are a lot of things to automate, such as you know setup, right? That the testers keep actually doing the same thing. And here is another thing that you have to understand, as you spoke about the traceability matrix part of it. I, I would say instead of instead of that, we could look at, you know, the impact part of it, the risk part of it, and say, well, you've been doing traceability metrics for a long time. How has it resulted? What kind of user feedback have we got? And then, you know, you know, tying that up to test coverage, and if people, you know, see this data, they might actually chuck the concept of, you know, uh, what's a traceability matrix and focus on user coverage, um, uh, you know, user profile coverage, and all of those different types of coverages that they might have not been doing in the name of traceability matrix, right? Any other problem statement that you want to talk about? Yes, please. Yeah. When we get an iterative builds, right? So build one, build two. Yeah. So uh, when the delta is more from build one to build two, so maybe there may be a bug leak from iterative build one to build two. So uh, that would have re reduced the risk uh, when we have uh, initially find that in the uh, build one itself. Yep. So this adds a lot of uh, criticism and also like reduces the tester confidence because it's a straight forward or maybe an edge case which would have uh, resulted in a bug leak in the prod or maybe which has been reduced as a showstopper. Yeah. Right. So in this case, how would we uh, help us in identifying this? Okay, let me quickly try to rephrase that. Are you saying that there's a build one and a build two and you know, build one has had a bug, which is kind of, you know, what's a slip to build two? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Right? And, and, and what's your question about it? Your question about it is, how do we find that in the build one itself? Right? Okay. <laughs> it's a, you, you know, so this is a question of the test coverage. I, I, and I just want to, I just want to try to go back, you know, to this one, uh, which talked about exploratory testing and, you know, things like that. Every, you know, there is something called the unlearn and learn. You can't necessarily find all the bugs, you know, that you want to find, but you can only learn. Okay, one. The second thing is you could focus on, you could focus on the test coverage. You could focus on the modeling. You know, that reminds me of another, you know, tool. Okay, that I, you know, that I've seen, which talks about all different kinds of models that can be applied to a certain. Um, um, you know, uh, you know, certain actually feature. Now, the reason why this did not work, we implemented this with a lot of testers. The reason why it did not work is, is testers are not used to modeling. So for them, it was intimidating to see that there are so many test models that they don't know about, right? But that's where you also need to bring in the training, okay? So this partly can be addressed by the tool in terms of showcasing the models, but it cannot be completely addressed you know, just by the tools. It also has to be, you know, going back to some level of, you know, training of the human beings. Okay? Any other, any other, you know, pain points? Yes. So, uh, uh, mobile apps, right? Yeah. There's always a saying that think like a user. Yeah. So, uh, uh, think like a user, step in the oh. user's shoe and do. Right. But um, now there are concepts like personas you create, like right. four or five personas. Right. Uh, what I feel is testers don't have the psychological part, like how, how to, suppose the yep. age, age is from 18 to 60. People. Yeah. So there's an age group and the different people use the app in a different way. We don't right. have that psychological part, how they might use this. And no tra nobody is training the tester in that front. Right. So is there is a solution for that? There, there, there are already plenty of tools available for that. We don't need to rebuild anything. So. Uh, you know, when, when we built a web application, we integrated something called Lucky Orange. I've sat and watched hours and hours of actual users coming and signing up 
and you know everything that they do with the application. There is a lot of uh, you know such what's the tools that's already available, but that's not the problem that I'm seeing today. I'm seeing the problem that the testers are not influential enough to sell these things into the company, right? Because because if you see um, the first one of the big reasons, one of the big reasons, and now. Now I know I'm, I'm actually talking to a large open source you know, community. At least in India, a lot of people ask this question, is it open source? And what they really mean is, is it free? Right? It's not that they're going to go touch the code, you know, tweak the code and make something work. It is, it, is, it is all to validate that, is it free, so that I can convince my manager much more easily. So if you take an example of the Lucky Orange, and here is where I think the, you know, this is where the, uh, you know, the testers need a bit of education in order to be able to say that, hey, this is a value I can contribute back. Now, I am looking to build a tool where testers can communicate to the management without, you know, bypassing their, you know, fears, bypassing their obligations to their employer and, you know, things like that. Okay, that could be an interesting, you know, problem to solve. Okay? Yeah, thanks. Yes, anything else? Yes, please. factor came into the picture. So anything like uh, how do you put test evidence and that to like uh, not copying log, taking screenshot and writing all those tips like. The test dividend? evidence. Evidence. Okay, the test evidence. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so like the example that I showed, um, the, the, you know, the one app where I mentioned that it kind of records all the flow and, you know, reports this, that is the evidence. Okay, one. You know, second thing. There are a few problems which are cultural problems in organization. The cultural problems cannot be solved through tools. They can only be addressed through people, right? So, so, so in such cases, as a tester, what I have done is I have tried fixing the cultural problem. You know, I'll also give an example where, where um, you know, uh, the, the, the best testing I ever did was no testing at all. There, you know? So we had this, you know, legacy product where nobody knew what the architecture was, and every time they fix a bug, they would add, you know, ten bucks, which we would find three bills later, right? And I said, the best thing to do on this product is no testing. Don't also fix any bugs. As long as you can sell, sell it, and try to, uh, you know, you know, re-architect and try to make a web version of that, right? Okay, we don't say these things. That's the problem we are facing today. We don't say these things. We say yes where we want to say no, which is something which you all know. It's not like I have to tell you that. But, but for me, what is exciting, what is interesting right now for me as a tester is how do I build that tool which helps people build confidence, build, build that you know, transparency, build the visibility. Okay, so on this context, I can tell you, you know, just one thing. Uh, you, all, you all would know that, that um, they ask the tester, should we release or not? They do in your companies? Yes, no. I want to hear it loud. Yes. Good, good. Okay, that's not for me. That's for people who have come up from outside India to think that, hey, this is what's happening here, right? Uh, and they ask that question. And you say no. But still, they go live. <laughs> why, why, why even ask that question? It's just for the sake. It's, it's just like estimation question, right? So, so for me, see, these problems are plaguing our industry, right? There is enough smart people out there to solve the test automation problem, so you don't bother about it, you know, right? There is, there is enough complementary people out there. These are kind of problems which are plaguing our industry, and we need to do something about it. Who is doing about it? I'm affected. I hope you, I hope even if you are affected, you know, because you smiled, you laughed at, you know, some of those things, and you, and you acknowledge these pain points, come, let's, let's form this community, let's build things which will help testers improve their credibility, improve their uh, influence, and, and as a software you know, community, we succeed through that, right? With that, is my time done? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Thank you.